So now we're talking about the icky bicky stuff, parts of the human physiology or reproduction, and it's not actually that bad. So the first question we want to talk about is about IVF and what is the what is placed into the uterus after the process of in vitro fertilization. So you need to know that um, with IVF, what happens is that they mix um, a sperm um, and they mix it with an egg and they get a zygote afterwards, which later becomes an embryo. And it's really important to know that the whole purpose of IVF is to give a baby at the end. So you can't just put a sperm in there because a sperm isn't a baby. You can't just put an egg in there or an ovum in there because that's not a baby. So straight away you can get rid of um, A or B. And the difference between an embryo and a fetus is that an embryo is actually what happens before. So zygote later becomes a blastocyst if you remember. So this is a ball of cells which still doesn't have any uh, structure. Um, and then it becomes an embryo. And then after that finally it becomes a fetus, after it becomes a lot bigger. So the key point that they want you to get at here is that a fetus is too big, it's too advanced for, you, for them to put into the uterus. The correct answer is C. Question number two. Which of the following is a role of testosterone in males? Another one which you need to just memorize the definitions for. The development of male genitalia, yeah, absolutely, that's correct. So it makes you, um, it makes males have a penis. The maintenance of sex drive, yes, it's important it's in sex drive, but increase in mental development, probably not as well. So we're looking for one and two here. And I mean, if it was increase in mental development, that wouldn't be very fair to females, would it? Because females have a lot less testosterone, obviously. Question number three. The hormones progesterone and luteinizing hormone were measured in a woman's blood over 40 days. When did her menstrual bleed start? And this diagram, you know, if you haven't practiced your menstrual cycle for a while, it can really scare the bejesus out of you. But um, the key thing to know is that with luteinizing hormone, luteinizing hormone lets the ovum go. So every time that you have here, you have ovulation. That's when the egg comes out. So think of it if it was, um, if a chicken is laying an egg, then as soon as the egg pops out, then it's kind of, that's called ovulation. Okay, and it's kind of similar in the human in humans as well. It's just that there's a big surge in luteinizing hormone, and then you have ovulation. However, that's not the key point here. The most important point is that you need to know that the next one, progesterone, this solid line here, and what that does is that it, that it maintains the lining of endometrium. So as you have high levels here, high levels of progesterone, you have good maintenance. But as it drops down here, you have bad maintenance and it dies off and once the endometrium this is just the uterine lining so it's kind of like think of it as like you know bits of skin kind of like surrounding the uterus and then if it doesn't have enough blood supply if it doesn't get nurtured enough by the progesterone it's going to die and as it dies guess what that's when you menstruate that's when the blood comes out of the vagina every approximately 28 days so when did her menstrual bleed start? You want to say it's definitely C here because as the progesterone comes down then the endometrium starts dying and then the, uh, the, the menstrual bleed starts as well. Good. Question number four, some female anatomy here. So what structures are shown from the side here? So um, number one we have here is a uterus. See how it's like pointing forward? kind of pointing forward like this, kind of like an emu. And then in number two, you have the vagina. And these are just some basic structures that you should, that you should need to know and that you should know as well. So we have uterus and vagina, um, so that's um, A here. Last question, during the menstrual cycle, what occurs in response to a fall in the progesterone level? So remember how we're talking about progesterone? So pro means fall, so it's kind of like, yeah. Gesterone means about gestation, so it's for making a baby. And whenever you, if you want to maintain that baby, you need to have that endometrium. So look up endometrium on Wikipedia or something like that. I know it's a bit of a tricky word, but um, think of it as the uterine lining. And as, so lots of progesterone means a happy uterine lighting, lightning, a happy uterine lining. But once it starts falling down, that's when you have menstruation and you have blood sloughing off from there. So in this particular question, it's D. Ovulation, that's associated with an increase in LH, luteinizing hormone. 
an increase in luteinizing hormone, okay? B, growth of the follicle surrounding the egg. Now, well, what causes that is actually a follicle stimulating hormone. Funnily enough, follicle stimulating hormone. And growth of the uterine lining, well, that's actually to do with progesterone, but it's an increase in progesterone, not a fall, okay? Good. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.